here we are then for the first of our semi-finals it is Chile against Argentina Gonzalez against Already then for the start, Correa to serve. Left, first serve. Left, first serve. Doubt that Correa is going to try and pepper the Gonzalez backhand. Slightly weaker, but he's still capable of getting a lot of winning shots from that side. Just in that kind of bar, that second set. Extraordinary. Shots from there today. Nice use, nice use of the slice backhand by Gonzalez, just playing the ball down to the feet of the incoming courier, causing him all sorts of problems. Yes. So, how much net play will we see today? Well, I think Correa will come to the net if the ball is short enough, but it's not somewhere that he feels particularly comfortable. But Gonzalez will come in a little bit more, particularly off the inside-out forehand. Yes. Correa's double-handed backhand is very consistent, but Gonzalez will still stick with his game plan of hitting that forehand inside-out to it as much as possible. a lot of tension down there on the court. This match means so much to both. Neither man has been in this final before, so a huge prize at stake. Gonzalez can continue to play like that. He's got an excellent yes. opportunity because he's mixing the pace up so well here. He's playing short angle on the cross court in order to open up the court. Correa has to then move to his left in order to open, cover the open court, and Gonzalez just going back behind. Very, very good tactic to use. Yes, good serve again. Steadied his nerve early in this game. He was very shaky to start with, and there's his wife, Carla, Correa's wife. And 
Mr. Blengino, Fabian Blengino, his Argentine coach. Those edgy moments at the start of the match often set the pattern. Correa, not that comfortable in the forecourt. So when you miss a couple of volleys early on, and that's not really your game plan, it does tend to put you off coming in as much as you would like to do for the remainder of the encounter. before the serve had been delivered that he was going to chip and charge which is good tactics but unfortunately the serve was right at him body line good one Again. And I think you'll be pretty relieved Collier to have held being put into bat and probably Gonzalez knew he'd be a bit tight so a tactic that many of the players use to elect to receive in order to try and take advantage of those early match nerves and get up a break. It didn't work for Gonzalez, but he certainly made Correa work hard in order to hold serve. Ratio de la Peña, Gonzalez coach, who got very pumped up the other night. Gonzalez got the better of Pavel in three sets. Fernando Gonzalez to serve. Gives those fingernails a good working over. work and he is a master of change of pace this fellow he will suddenly explode on the ball and this is Gonzalez at his very best a good comfortable serve and then look at the footwork in order to play a forehand wide of the single side cut court on the left hand side and thereafter just mopping up nicely mm. well, the other thing that's sometimes difficult to pick up on tv is how heavy gonzalez hits the ball he generates such huge amount of spin particularly on that forehand and that's why he's able to generate those short angles cross court very very tough to play against the ball kicks off the court surface and that was something that uh, Roger Federer noted after he played Nadal and lost to him the young Spanish 17 year old he said that the ball was hit so hard with fizzing topspin that it was kicking up like a mule off a length awkward built up as they come onto this court to the sound of music and I'm not sure that that altogether is a good thing they get overexcited one game all one all and honors even and they'll both be pretty relieved men to have held I tell you, on a nasty, windy day. First serve percentage is going to be important for both players. Both have started nicely. Gonzalez at 83%, Correa at 75 The game plans are very much based around getting a lot of those in, and trying to open up the court, particularly with the slice serve out wide. <laughs> Yeah. 
change of pace again. That's why Correa has to have success in the backhand to backhand ground stroke rally. Because if not, and Gonzalez gets the opportunity to use the forehand, then I think he is the hot favourite to win the majority of rallies. Tactic is a good one. He's opened up the court by going to the forehand. Gonzalez using a squash shot to get the ball back in play. But we've seen Correa already miss a couple of relatively simple volleys. And his confidence is obviously shaken at the net. Shaken, having made a couple of easy unforced errors, that shot is usually a very reliable one for him. Gonzalez is making the distance easily. What a superb pass on the full run. Gonzalez then, to the delight of the Chilean supporters here, has the first break of serve. He's 2-1. Well, he's hitting through the wind so well, is Gonzalez, isn't he? And he's very confident. I mean, when you look at the players that he's beaten to get to this stage, Vigi Novak, Rafael Nadal, Andre Pavel, they're all consistent players. They make him play a lot of ball, so for him to have come through those three matches, he must be very, very confident to lead. And I think he's come out today, and I don't think he's daunted by the prospect of beating Correa because he's so confident in his own ability. The forehand is working well, but not only that, the backhand is consistent. The first serve has been working extremely well for him. So there's very few areas of his game that he doesn't like at the moment, and that's why I think he started the better of the two, because he's more comfortable and confident out there. And true pro that he is, he's changed his overhandle, over grip after only three games played. And you'll see him do that quite a lot today. He'll have a whole bunch of them in the bag. And while they were sitting there, the music blaring out again from the loudspeakers. I'm not sure that uh, that is uh, going to help them at all. Pump too much adrenaline, I think. Hardly a cloud. So Gonzalez at 2 1, testing this place of the sun. Gonzalez to get his first serve percentage nice and high, but for Correa to return the ball as deep as possible. He doesn't want to let Gonzalez move inside the baseline to play the aggressive ground strokes. Intelligent serve. It's only 103 miles an hour coming around the outside edge of the ball to add enough slice. Take Correa out wide. A tactic that they'll both try and use as much as possible to the juice court. that Correa is still just a little tense and he certainly got his coach 
all tensed up there. Poor old uh, Horacio really suffers, doesn't he? Does it's very difficult for those that are just watching that can't get out on the court and do something about it. time at this tournament but he's never been in the semi-final before nor for that matter has uh, Gonzalez okay. it's good use of what I think is Collier's best shot the backhand cross court when he's under pressure and asked to pass he uses that shot vast majority of the time getting it lower than the height of the net forcing the opponent to volley up and then he usually mops up nicely but there'll be no overrule. Uh, that will go down as Correa's first ace, and he's keeping himself in the hunt. A breakdown, 3-2 Gonzalez. Well, what has Correa got to do to contain the power of Gonzalez? He's clearly not going to be able to hit the ball quite... I mean, he hits the ball hard himself, but not as hard as Gonzalez. How does he cope? He certainly doesn't want to be trying to out-hit Gonzalez, that's for sure. He's got to remember what his strengths are, and that is getting a lot of balls back in court, and he's got to try and keep the, the, the best length possible. So he's got to hit the ball high over the net with as much top spin as he can to try and get the ball to kick up and force Gonzalez, really, who sometimes does get a little bit impatient as the rally progresses, to go for something that isn't really on. If he doesn't do that, Corey, he's going to be in trouble, because if he drops the ball short, Gonzalez will be able to step up the court. His footwork is good, so he'll be able to use his forehand, and then Correa will be scurrying around the baseline, and it's very difficult to stay in the rally with Gonzalez playing this well. So it's all about commitment to concentration, focus, and consistency from Correa. Also needs a high percentage of first serves in so that Gonzalez doesn't get a look at too many of his second serves. Well, there's Fabian. Mr. Blendino, who he teamed up with from January this year, he used to be coached by Alberto Mancini from January last year, after the Australian Open to the end of last year, and it was a surprise really to most of us when Alberto was sort of left out of the mix for 2004. He helped Guillermo to win five tournaments last year. in weight, uh, sort of more the sort of uh, more like a terrier to the bulldog of Gonzalez. And he hits his weight to Gonzalez, and that's 180 pounds, 81 kilos and a full 40 or 35 kilos lighter than his courier. So to hit the ball as hard as he does, he's got to use more effort. Correa to try and move Gonzalez around as much as he can, draw him into the net, and of course we know that he's got an excellent double-handed topspin lob, but just couldn't quite get it high enough to force Gonzalez to move back 
to the baseline. So a good hustle by both players. that there's the umpire Steve Ulrich who is being can't see it, can't see it to change it and I can't change it and why should he change it, it's out but Correa was complaining that it was Gonzalez's attitude that influenced the linesman to call that's what he didn't like doing it again but again it was out you saw that little gesture from Correa yeah, the players don't like that when the ball is anywhere near the line and as soon as any players hit the shot they instantly glare at the lines person hoping to get a call much better if you just play the rally and you wait for the call it's a little bit more sporting Tense. Remember the forehand pass in the middle of the last game that he put halfway up the net, and that last error, evidence of it. You'll have to lose this tension somehow. Fifteen. And the wind helping it on its way got to allow just a little more margin for error on a windy day and the wind isn't that apparent to you watching on our main camera but believe me it's there the girls are playing you can see their skirts fluttering but there's not much uh, evidence of wind here with these two just down the court, so Gonzalez has the advantage of that at this end. So Correa really has to try and generate a little bit more pace at the far end to hit through the wind, get the ball a little bit deeper. Gonzalez is still just the one break ahead. Fortune. And I think both players will be glad of these umbrellas. He's carrying on these discussions. Well, here you are. He's still going on about Gonzalez influencing the linesman. And while you've got that sort of thought rattling about in your head you're not concentrating on what you should be doing and sometimes Korea does tend to complain and moan a little bit when things aren't going as well particularly over line calls it's something that he's got to try and grow out of it certainly doesn't help him in this kind of environment hey, look at this on their chests a C an H an I next there we are an L and an E well you know who they're supporting delighted that Gonzalez has already got his break. It's terrific stuff, this, isn't it? Almost like a football match. Well, there are the Argentines. Time. So, the various groups of support for 
each player. We have new tennis balls. And here is down the awkward end, the sunny end. Gonzalez is trying to attempt there, the short angle backhand in order to draw Correa up the court and then as soon as he goes cross court with that shot he's trying to then hit the winner down the line so tactics are evident but the execution is difficult. Chilean supporters to cheer at the moment than the Argentines. doing all the running, not making too many unforced errors. And some big plastic yes. bags blowing across the court just behind the server. I'll give you an idea, another one <laughs> for net here. There it is. And the other one is swirled. Now you see that's a very good indication how the wind swirls in this stadium. Well caught, madam, or sir, madam. <laughs> concerned you can see here Gonzalez able to step inside the baseline that's why he's able to generate such a nice angle <laughs> all that for Gonzalez all that shot So far, is it? Uh, 
it's an intelligent play though from Gonzalez because he's using the wind well. He's against the wind at that end, so he can give the ball lots of air and will then be drawn back towards the net. So it will give Correa a greater distance to run and then his shot will be a little bit more difficult with the wind. the sort of serve to use more today the kicker that goes up high because it swirls about difficult to control a ball from head height Fully relaxed. That's a good pattern of play from Correa. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he worked on prior to the match with his coach. He just hasn't been able to execute it enough, really. To this point in the match. No, he's yes. over Reddit, isn't he? Um, certainly is, but I think Gonzalez is playing a very smart match. You haven't often seen him this week use that little short angle sliced backhand. It's something I'm sure he's worked on specifically into his game plan today. Never a mistake to lob in the wind as long as you can get it a bit deeper than that. Had it been deep, that would have been a very nasty smash for Correa. And the good kick serve gets the reply once and Carlo and his wife and Coach Fabian a little happier now. But 5-4 with a break, Gonzalez. It's been a good set as far as Gonzalez is concerned, but I think the serve has certainly played its part. You can see the first serve percentage is very healthy indeed, and it's not quite as effective as he would like, as he would normally want to try and win a few more points than the 68% currently when the first serve does find its mark. But look at the damage Gonzalez is doing to the Correa second serve. Correa has only won one of seven points when he's been down to his weakest delivery, and that was something that we highlighted at the beginning of the match that was going to be an important factor in the outcome. Gonzalez, on the other hand, his first serve percentage isn't quite as high, but it is very effective at 67%. But look at the second serve. Correa not able to get hold of it at all. Gonzalez winning eight out of the ten points when he's been down to his weakest delivery. So that is a fundamental difference between these two players, and I think that has been a major difference in the match to date.
see a few miss hits today. We saw them yesterday when the wind was troublesome. Horacio quite calm at the moment. This man two points away from what would be a first final if he were to complete this match successfully at a master series. Tears there, Courier, that he missed the lob to keep the point alive. And it's given Gonzalez uh, two seconds. tactic especially with the wind because it's a little bit more difficult at this end of the court to execute it well of errors for Courier and the delighted Chileans after 37 minutes can hail Gonzalez for winning that opening set six. Well I think that was a justified scoreline I mean absolutely reflecting what had happened. No doubt about it Gonzalez will be delighted with his performance in the opening set and I think if we have a look at the first set summary the only thing that will be slightly perturbed about will be the unforced errors but you expect him to make a few of those because he is doing all the running he's going to be the player trying to dominate the majority of rallies so a ratio of two to one is not too bad 14 unforced errors to just seven winners first serve percentage is okay he wants to try and get that up into the 60s if at all possible but he is managing to fashion some break point opportunities so that's key courier on the other hand making uh, okay in terms of unforced errors, seven, but not enough winners and not really doing enough. Even though you see his first serve percentage is 80%, it's the second serve that Gonzalez is able to get hold of, so you're not seeing the full story there. All in all, Gonzalez the better player in the opening 36 minutes. Yes, I don't think there was much doubt about that, as we shall see, I think, from some of these brilliant Gonzalez winners. Well, he loves to use the forehand as much as he can, and his footwork is excellent in the back of the court, so Correa gets frustrated when he can't get the ball to the Gonzalez backhand. You can see there he's playing a forehand wide of the single sideline on the left-hand side of the court. And he can also generate some really nice angles because he hits a very heavy ball. And he can also then also change the pace and surprise Correa with a flat shot. So a fantastic set, really, for Gonzalez. And the delighted Chilean spectators leap to their feet in triumph. Well, it's... It's not over till it's over, and that's only halfway there. Correa, a very spirited fighter, and we'll see how he responds. Up. That's 
good stuff to Gonzalez again. It's the short angle, this time manufactured on the backhand, forcing Corey to play with the single-hander. And Gonzalez in a good position in the net, having snuck in behind the backhand. time it's Correa who's able to use the forehand inside out and then it's because he's opened up the court the backhand down the line is on sometimes do after winning the first set and that's what Gonzalez was guard against and also I think he's got to guard against his own tendency to gild the lily a bit he does tend to try and over elaborate and play some what he thinks will be beautiful winners at the wrong moment Sometimes, as well, John, when you've got a tremendous fan base making a lot of noise, you, you want to try and impress them. You want to play well enough to give them something to cheer about, and you have to guard against that as well. Ability now, the backhand for Gonzalez. Ten on four sales, just the one win up, so he's got to be careful in the Korea game plan. Working well, trying to pepper that shot. De La Pena will be a bit disgruntled with the focus and the concentration from Gonzalez at the beginning of this set because he throw Correa a lifeline, more often than not, he will gratefully accept. something to cheer. Very poor game. Corey will be absolutely delighted. Five unforced errors already in this set from Gonzalez. And that's exactly what he wanted to guard against. Once he had Corey up under a little bit of pressure having pocketed the opening set.
But he's really starting to lose his way now, Gonzalez. He had a lot of time having come into the net when Correa played the lob to play a normal backhand, but instead playing to the crowd. Thank you. Nowhere near making the shot. He's going to start to refocus here, otherwise he's not careful. This second set is going to be over before it's even started as far as he's concerned. smart player I don't think this Correa gave the attempted drop shot a little bit too much air and it was rather obvious that he was going to go back down the line good anticipation though from Gonzalez about to say that his father Oscar as a tennis coach and named him after Guillermo Vilas great left-hander of course of Argentina practice at home with his pal Joey Alvarez. Well, that's good play, Gonzalez, finally finding his focus. Again, it was too short for the Correa. He's had to play a lot of slice forehands in this match so far because he's been under so much pressure. Gonzalez moving through the ball nicely there in order to close out the net. Frustrated here because he knows he's been gifted an opportunity at the beginning of this second set and he's not making the most of it. He should really have been able to get underneath that ball, it wasn't too low. Starting to get a little bit frustrated now. the tournament for me extraordinary reflexes and to the delight of the Chileans he's broken back it's 2-1 Correa now but without a break well that was absolutely sensational from both players it's an extraordinary game really both players trying to use the drop shot as much as possible Gonzalez going up the line clipping the top of the net Correa doing exceptionally well to respond and then Gonzalez anticipating the fact that he was going to try and go down the line. Well behind the baseline, so he did well initially to make the distance. And then two hands on the backhand in order to try and get the ball back over the net. And he was moving backwards in order to try and cover the court. But he's still able to make the shot. Correa at this point still in control of the rally. But once that ball clips the top of the net, he does exceptionally well just to get the ball back in play. Both players hitting a double hit, which is now, of course, legal. And then Correa, perhaps there, would have been better advised to go straight at Gonzalez, which would have given him a little bit less time to react. 
Yes, we'd better clarify that question of the double hit. It's legal if it's all in one motion of the racket. You can't hit the ball up in the air with the racket and then hit it again. But if it's all in one swinging motion, double hits count. Time. Count as a legal shot. Well, absolutely marvellous entertainment value, this match, but it seems to me the Courier is still not fully relaxed. He's playing all the big points in a rather tense, well, not all of them, but too many of them in a rather tense manner. Well, the atmosphere absolutely electric. As Gonzalez, having broken back, he's now 1-2. set we said how important it was to try and get after the Gonzalez second serve he hasn't been able to make a first serve in this set so far Correa been very se successful indeed when he gets a look at the second serve Again. It's good stuff again, the sliced backhand, this time not dropping it as short as he has been doing previously, so playing a little bit more high percentage, but still able to open up the court for use of the forehand. a lovely shot maker this man and when he keeps his mind on the job well huge entertainment value he's done very well because obviously the first couple of games were pretty ugly as far as he was concerned but to be able to right the ship so quickly it will delight not only him but also his coach and loads of fans in the stadium be a little bit off-putting for them, giving us some lovely views. Overhead views of the scene. The 
and it is just a little noisy at times. Swirls. I think he's coping with the conditions rather better than Korea. Gonzalez forehand really is the shot of the tournament. He's using it so well. It's not just the pace, it's the spin on there as well. And you can see just brushing up the back of the ball in order to generate as much as he can. entertainment this and most of it being provided by Gonzalez who with a run of three games from Love 2 is now leading 3-2 well it's fantastic stuff as far as Gonzalez is concerned it's really been the forehand has been the difference between him and the opponents that he's played this week. You can see he was under extreme pressure in the return of serve there, but he was still able to flatten the ball out. And the difference between his forehand is the key because a lot of players get used to players just hitting the ball at one pace, but Gonzalez has tremendous ability to be able to change it. And he can also hit a heavy forehand. He can use short angles. He can throw the ball up nice and high. I think that's causing Korea all sorts of problems. Korea has been out of sorts since the beginning of the match, and Gonzalez only really having that blip in the first couple of games, the beginning of this second set. But I've been so impressed with his ability to be able to maintain his level of play. So I think having managed to break serve in a row here, Gonzalez. It's very much a case of maintaining his concentration now. He can't get ahead of himself. He can't think about the fact that it will be his first final. He's got to try and stay in the present. Well, look at this. Quite a chorus line of youngsters there with their chili on their chests. Seats, please. Thank you. spin here way too much air Gonzalez backhand so Corey had plenty of time to get set up look at the upper body rotation and the use of the wrist in order to generate the spin
men playing today in their seventh tournament of the year. They've both been involved in Davis Cup duty for their countries. because initially Corey did exceptionally well to get back in the rally with that lob there. But this time Gonzalez choosing the more reliable ground stroke instead of the attempted shot between the legs. But Corey rather telegraphed the attempted drop shot there after Gonzalez already well inside the court when Corey was trying to execute the shot. His favourite shot, that one. Two-handed back in down the line. Because generally he hasn't been in a position to be able to hit that shot. He's always been scrambling around the baseline trying to defend. Very rarely has he been able to get his feet set in order to execute that shot. sensible from Gonzalez to be attempting the drop shot against the wind but he just gave it too much air had a lot of slice on the ball so Correa had to be careful not to touch the net but it was just a little bit too high and therefore he was able to generate a nice little angle shut off this game which is a little dangerous he knows he's got his break and he seems content with that whereas a second break would be real insurance game yeah. no argument about the finish to that game and that third, third ace has kept the deficit down to one break it's 4-3 Gonzalez second set Correa here today, it seems to me, is being outplayed, out-hit, out-thought, and I'm not quite sure that he is capable of... I don't know that he's got the equipment to turn this match around, provided Gonzalez doesn't uh, take the foot off the pedal. Well, that's the key, and I think that's really Correa's only hope. He's got to try and make as many balls as possible between now and the end of this second set in the hope that Gonzalez will get a little bit tight, and when he does get tight, perhaps he'll miss his first serve, perhaps he'll make a couple of unforced errors in terms of his shot selection and his execution, and then I think Correa is always ready to get back in the match. This is exactly what happened when he played Julian Benito the other day. Benito was all over him in the third set, hitting winners from every part of the court, particularly with the forehand. Correa just hung in there, hung in there, and then when Benito got a little bit tight, Correa pounced and came through to win the match, and that's what he does so very well. 
Slight difference, though, I think, in the experience of Benito and Gonzalez. No doubt about it. Gonzalez, as well, is a lot more confident. He, he has beaten players of the caliber of Correa, and he's playing very, very well now. So I think the chances of him making that many areas and capitulating as much as Benito did are small, but he will definitely get a little bit tight. It just depends how he handles those nerves. View from the blimp of this lovely centre court at Canyon Park. 4 3 Gonzalez. Yes, a little bit lazy there on that return that was very deep. Gonzalez tried to improvise with his. Risked and failed. I wonder what happened in the second game of this set. Well, that might prevent the same thing happening if it can serve like that. Third ace. Double fault of the day. This last the second. Yeah, it's good tennis under pressure, and it was sensible tennis. Took a little bit off the serve, only 115 miles an hour, and then a heavy forehand. So still playing high percentage, but aggressive tennis under pressure. shoulder tonight for the lines burst. to 5-3 in this set. It was a good game to win because he was under a little bit of pressure early on. He responded very well. What he had to do at this juncture when you're trailing 3 5, your own service must be once convincingly to let the other man think about serving for the match, which he'll be doing. It's 5 5. Well, that was a good service game from Correa. As you say, John, doing exactly what the coaching manual tells you. A comfortable service game to put pressure on the Argentine. 
uh, the Chilean rather to serve out the match and there will be a little bit of pressure there's no doubt about it so it's up to Korea to try and get a couple of points early on in the game and if possible to get a look at one or two second serves and then it will be up to Korea to try and keep his unforced error count low and force Gonzalez to maybe do a little bit too much in his anxiety to put the match to bed very vivid idea of how strong the wind is high up in the stand and of course they're protected partially by the stands of this center court but it does come in and swirl around the bowl shape of this arena which makes life so difficult so here they are these lads with the chili on their chest their man has really done them proud today. Fernando about to serve for a place in a first Master Series final. now all right nothing to lose now <laughs> that's better yeah, really yeah. timed that forehand very well much to the delight of Filipino 90 miles an hour so no holding back fully committed to the game plan Time is running out for Korea. shot than the drop shot where you just play it low with slice you force Korea to come into the net he's not comfortable there he didn't put the initial volley away Gonzalez able to finish the points off nicely with the forehand so what a season it is for Gonzalez one of the continuing improvement Just one more point for Gonzalez. And if he does clinch this match here, it will lift him from 12th place to 10th in the Masters race and take him closer to a place in the season ending playoff. Two match points. the nerves we still got one more chance the third double fault giving Korea just a last glimmer of hope
Well, yes. while there's life, Carlo there encouraging our hubby to cling on here. Matches, plenty of them have been won from match point down. Pena will be a bit disappointed. Gonzalez never really had control of that last point. He's always forcing, never really comfortable throughout, eventually making the error. of different ways and Gonzalez here losing his way because the shot selection so poor in the last two points of course the double fault coming before that but the drop shot was never on from that position Correa having plenty of time to make the distance and then simply placing the ball into the open court a point for five simple shot for him it's just a basic backhand cross court to a length and you see him make that shot time and time again very uncharacteristic error and that's been one of the problems really in the match hasn't been as tight as he has been previously the shot selection and the inability to execute. Well, what a strange old game this is. One minute on the brink of victory, and now with the momentum totally swinging in favour of Courier, in danger of losing this set if he can't somehow stem the tide of Argentine winners. Well, we've now got a completely different tennis match on our hands here. Five all. Situation. Both men struggling internally to steady the nerves. Oh, he's had a nightmare really from the net throughout the match. Simple volleys which we normally hope to put away have been missed. And 
an appeal from Correa saying that Gonzalez caught the ball again. He's going through the tortures of the dam now, this Correa. The mistakes he's making on bread and butter shots that are his stock in trade. He is the man who doesn't make errors. And he's appealed to the supervisor there, Gail Bradshaw, but nothing he can do. So who can get control of their nerves first here? That will decide the issue. Licking his lips nervously. <laughs> and his favorite shot now failing him. Struggling to time the ball, doesn't know whether to just try and put it in play and hope that Corey will miss. It's not his natural game plan, but because he's so tight, he's not able to open the shoulders with the freedom he enjoyed at the beginning of the match. defeat in the face but he did what everybody would hope their charge would do and just plays a solid game and took his opportunity when it came to Gonzalez now really with it all to do because it's very very difficult as a player once you've had match points and especially when you lose them yourself through your inability to be able to control your nerves it's very much a case Ben's trying to stay in the present, looking at the situation. The fact is, he's a set up and he's on serve in the second set. Still got a very good chance to win this match, but if he keeps thinking through to the past where he's had his match points, he's had his opportunity, and he keeps berating himself for those missed opportunities, then he's going to be in trouble. And what an atmosphere here at. Cranham Park semi-final day at the NASDAQ 100 for 2004. Absolute drama. Two match points. Gonzalez on his serve. He serves the double Thank you, ready for play. And then hits a forehand into the net. And there it's been down ever since. He's five strikes. at the back of his mind he knows that he has three defeats against Curry. he's never beaten him trembling on the brink just now well he's really gone to pieces hasn't he and his poor coach there I cannot understand what's happening. Five double faults now. One on match point. That was the third, and two more here. Well, 
Well, he's blown it. Three set points for Curry. to the winds. Unbelievable rally that was. Gonzalez really giving up the ghost in this set, just really opening his shoulders, irrespective of the fact as whether he thought the ball was going to go in or not. But it did. Just to save a set point, but probably still got a couple of opportunities here. And fundamental to it all is this swirling wind which makes life so difficult for both of them to play their normal games. Yes. And what a wonderful scoring system we have in this sport. The swings that occur are absolutely gripping. Deuce. He suddenly thinks, well, actually, hang on a minute, I've got another chance here. And the tightness returns in the arm, and another unforced error. So for the fourth time, Coria is at set point. Big forehand into the space, and that will do it the power of good. should have a tie break to end this set. It's been such a hotly disputed one when Correa led two love. It looked as if he got the initiative. Then there was the run of four games in a row from Gonzalez to make it 4 2, and then the swings at the end of it both ways. So here are the tie break records Correa 8 2, Gonzalez 4 3. shots which aren't natural to his game they did work initially in the first 
two thirds really of the match so far, but I think when he's this tight, this nervous, he's got to really stick to a very basic game plan. Keep the ball in play, anything short, then he can be aggressive. But not try and do anything too fancy, because it's very difficult when you're nervous. Exactly what I'm talking about. Just use the forehand, hit nice oh, heavy no. shots with a lot of spin, and then if you get the opportunity, come into the net, but keep it simple. No little drop volleys, no cute angles. Just a very simple execution into the space. Do the world of good. He's got to try and rebuild his confidence, his belief in his own ability to be able to play well under pressure. up nice and early and it was well inside the baseline as well so that was the right time to try and change direction on the ball so good shot selection under pressure on that occasion for Gonzalez. Today about his shots. He's been a bit unlucky with some close ones, and you remember he believed that Gonzalez was influencing the linesman on some of them, but that's only in his head, really. Anxiety in the Korea camp now. It's the mini break to Gonzalez, the first. seems to have got his nerves under control rather better than Cole at the moment. I think the game at 5-6 still in the world is good. Remember that point at Love 40 where pretty much he said, OK, the set's gone, I'm just going to open my shoulders, played some incredible shots, and then managed to believe, OK, I've still got a chance in this set. So it was on a knife edge for a while, but he certainly seems to have recovered his composure very well indeed, and now he's striking the ball very sensibly. He's not going for outrageous winners. He's hitting the ball heavy, adding a lot of spin so that he's not making these unforced errors. But he's still playing aggressively, which is his natural game plan, so that's good to see. Well, that was an important point because Gonzalez really had an opportunity to take a free swing at the ball, but he had to wait, wait for the right opportunity. He was well behind the baseline there. It was a wrong shot selection. <laughs> 
wanting to end it. Wanting to end it a bit too quickly. But he still has the mini break. Desperate here for a first serve. The double faults have plagued him in key moments in this second set. So he's got to perhaps take a little bit of pace off the first, get it in, take a little bit of pressure off his shoulders, and then hope to dominate the rally from the back of the court. time Gonzalez has forced his way to match point. Attempting to run around and use the forehand. The legs do get heavy when there's tension. That should have been happy and content just to play a backhand from that position. In the his heart to his support group Six as he saves a fourth match point. Good tennis because he's missed a lot of volleys a lot easier than that throughout the match so doing well to keep his eye on the ball and control the angle of the racket face under extreme pressure but again from Gonzalez's point of view didn't play the point very well at all struggled with his timing and his footwork to get into the right position so ended up Giving Correa a relatively easy passage to the net. What drama. An absolutely gripping match. Little did these two think. When at the start of the year they left their own countries, flew across the South Pacific to Auckland, where they both lost early, that a quarter of the way through the season they'd be in the drama of this wonderful match. <laughs> Trusty forehand of Gonzalez letting him down at the wrong moment. And now, Correa with his fourth set point. Gonzalez collapses. He serves a sixth double fold and loses the set. 8 6. We'll take a look at the statistics of the second set. Look at the unforced error count. It's to be expected that Correa would make less than Gonzalez, but many of those from Gonzalez coming at key moments, and his game really fell apart from the moment he had an opportunity to serve for the match. So now it's all about the mental outlook of the two players, momentum firmly on the side of Correa. And the question is, is Gonzalez going to be able to react well to adversity? That'll be the telling question in this deciding set. 
And what a match it is, full of drama, as I think we shall see. That was where it all ended. The double fault is sixth to lose the set. And this is what Correa thought about it. Determination written in every feature. And what about the support group? His wife there and his coach overjoyed. That Guillermo had somehow turned the set his way. But not yet the match. That is still up for grabs. And we have a totally new situation now. It's almost as if the match was being restarted. Especially from Gonzalez's point of view, started the match playing exceptionally well. Correa was struggling with his timing. Gonzalez now has got a huge mental hurdle to overcome. And Correa will feel very confident indeed about his prospects, Time. given the fact that the momentum is now firmly on his side. And from our spy in the sky, we get a wonderful view of all the scenes below. And there it is, the bird's eye view, a blimp's eye view of Planet Power. But no picture can convey the drama that has just unfolded. Seats, please. Thank you. Final set. With uh, Gonzalez holding two match points when he was leading 5-4 and serving. He served the double fault on the first, missed the forehand of the net on the second, and then tightened up again. And he had two more in the tie. Final set. start for the still tentative Gonzalez who couldn't somehow release the tension in him to hit his normal powerful shots when he had to at the critical moment on his own serve serving 5-4 demons of doubt crowding in. He's got to banish them if he's going to turn this match around because the momentum is with this man. absolutely charmed life in these championships. You remember he had to win five games in a row against Benito in the final set to beat the Frenchman, who choked on his lead. It's happened again. You've got to remember also the fact that Gonzalez, having had a disputed line call in the first set tiebreak against Pavel, then went a breakdown in the second set, but responded really, really well there. Whether he can do so again today, I'm not so sure because 
it's going to find it very, very difficult to put the thoughts of those match points and the way this game fell apart out of his mind. One love. Example of what we're often saying that tennis matches are won and lost in the mind. You make a good point, John. The rankings don't lie in the fact that Korea is ranked four in the entry system of Gonzalez. 22 there is a significant difference in that Correa wins a lot of big matches because he's very tough mentally Gonzalez on the other hand not quite so Gonzalez's tactics really were suspect, those drop shots he keeps playing. All right when Corey was very tense at the start of the match, but he's relaxed all right now. Two love. This is a huge game, goes without saying, Gonzalez really must win this one. But an opportunity for Corey really to stamp his authority on this decides. He's got to tell himself, yes, this is where we were in the second set, and I came back to serve for the match. you a very good indication of the state of mind Gonzalez is currently in. Can't think clearly under pressure, doesn't know how to construct the points. Totally frustrated. This could be a very quick set, unless he quickly snaps out of this mindset. working over now. He's playing like an amateur now, Gonzalez. No idea in terms of his shot selection as to whether it's the right time to attempt to try and hit a winner or not. The end result is a whole host of unforced errors. Korea will be accepting very gratefully indeed. Difficult to find the court now, Gonzalez. And 
he is in a mental fog at the moment as Correa takes a three-love lead, two breaks to the Argentines. Corey has done exceptionally well to really tighten up his game and it really counted in the second set and particularly in this third one. Only 12 unforced errors, which is phenomenal when you consider the amount of pressure he's been under when playing against Gonzalez. Just four on the forehand and four on the backhand. As you would expect, his game from the back of the court has been rock solid once he got over that initial tension in his racket arm. Now, the key for Gonzalez is to try and keep his unforced error count down, but unfortunately, he hasn't been able to do that. A whopping 42 unforced errors in the match. Incredible, really, and the vast majority of those coming recently and coming from the back of the court. So, he has to use these moments at the change of ends to try and regain his composure in order to get back into the match. Well, Correa is really flying at the moment. And so are these little planes, those little seaplanes. What a nice way to spend your Friday afternoon. Time. clear up the bottles from the players' chairs. It's three love. Love 15. Well, 97 miles an hour. And perhaps hitting that one through a little bit of a red mist. decided it to hit his way out of trouble, obviously. May not be a bad thing, it may relax him. Attack being the best form of defence as far as Gonzalez is concerned. The body line works as often as not. trying to achieve him. He doesn't know what game to play. Doesn't know whether to hit or hope. That's about all he can do, I think, hope at the moment. Too good. Nicole loves that shot and he plays it so very well. Very difficult to read because he's got two hands on it. Just shortens the back swing and just drops the wrists to get underneath the ball. Gonzalez committed, a little bit too close to the net, going right into Correa's hands. Too short from Correa. Gonzalo is able to really unwind on the forehand. 98 miles an hour there, so they're getting bigger. Oh. 
sad sight, this, because he played so well, Gonzalez, to get himself into a winning position. But he didn't believe enough, and he didn't go on with the winning tactics of taking him to match point when he reached match point. And, of course, Curry is just the man to exploit those mental weaknesses. Thank you. Love for selection of Gonzalez, overplaying the drop shot now. And Correa anticipating, moving well at the net. directing the traffic in the right direction. This was a pattern of play that Gonzalez used very effectively in the first set and three quarters. The opportunity to do so few and far between in the last 20 to 30 minutes. Gonzalez relaxed enough to be able to hit his natural shots in. And just a toe hold on this set, but that's all. It's 4-1 Korean. Well, it really is a desperate situation for Gonzalez, but you have to take your hat off to Korea responded exceptionally well to adversity as well as being a very consistent performer his shot selection has been good and he has been able to hit winning shots likes to use the backhand but of course is fully capable on the forehand as well and then when the ball has been dropped short by Gonzalez he's been able to move forwards he's very capable overhead but of course his favorite shot really is the backhand cross court and here off the drop shot a shot which he's had plenty of practice hitting today The backhand is the favourite in a nice position inside the baseline. So he's really used his game very effectively today to find himself in this position. Well, of course, there's a terrific personal mental battle going on between them. They both know the score of previous meetings 3 0 to Korea. And I think Gonzalez must have felt that his improvement over the last two years since they last played would have earned him the chance to win. And he got himself so close, now it seems fairly hopeless. So just two hours have passed. And Correa has Thank you, Ready for play. built this winning lead 4 1 final set. serve has worked well for Correa. Short return dealt with very ably. Got a spin on the ball, rushing up the back with the wrist. Well, 
able to get the necessary control. He was playing in the earlier part of the match, using those angles well. Good footwork to get to his best shot. Careful, he doesn't give Gonzalez too many forehands because he's certainly just swinging at the ball now and he's he has the opportunity to hit winners from anywhere on the court. The amount of talent he has. The moment he finds himself in a position to just so slightly get back in the match, the tension returns, and so do the four stars. Poor Horatio. Just relax and go for his shots in the way that he did in the first part of the match with conviction. He could still turn this round. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's just a question of whether he believes he can and whether he wants to. A bit busy feeling sorry for himself at the moment. Yeah, and sadly for him, Correa here finding one of his best serves there. Slider at 103 miles an hour. Well, he's like Carver there. Must have been, well, very upset at the end of the second set, I think. under pressure on the backhand side. Nine times out of ten, he gets that ball lower than the height of the net, and Gonzalez unable to, in any way near making the shot, because his state of mind is totally confused. 1-5. that he's not trying but he doesn't quite know what to do confusion And Korea. Thank you. 
Courier with three match points. back for Gonzalez from the victor who never stopped believing even when he was four times match point down and thanking the crowd for helping him through but he really should congratulate himself because he never stopped believing and Gonzalez did well, he's a very very tough competitor and it's been proved once again this afternoon because to come back from that situation shows tremendous spirit and inner belief but Gonzalez didn't have either when it really mattered and he will find it very difficult to get any sleep tonight it's going to be very interesting to see how he responds to that defeat for the rest of the summer because it's going to be very difficult but for Correa he's got a lot to look forward to in this event so two hours and six minutes of really thrilling tennis and a, an example that matches are won in the mind. Gonzalez started the match particularly well but managed to rack up 47 unforced errors in the three sets, many of those coming in the latter stages of the second set and most of the third, whereas Correa really tightened his game up after starting a little bit nervously and only made 12 unforced errors in the whole match. So I think he will take a lot of confidence into the final and he can look forward to having an excellent chance of winning the title. Well, I must say, even the check for $134,000 that Gonzalez will take home will certainly be no consolation for a match that he knows he should have won, but he didn't. And we'll look back now with pleasure at some of the highlights. The king of clay in South America has created a king's rhapsody on hard courts here at Key Biscayne. He is through the Gemma Correa to the final, which of course will be played on Sunday. And that is the end of our coverage of this afternoon's events because it's not until 7 o'clock tonight that Andy Roddick will face the challenge of his lower ranked fellow American, Vince Spadia. That should be a fascinating encounter. Hope you'll join us at 7 o'clock local time. In the meantime, for Jason Goodall, I'm John Barrett, leaving you with memories of the man of the day, Gemma Curry.